Welcome, welcome, welcome. Text your family and friends. Use your social media networks, Facebook, Instagram. Use whatever you have. Everybody know. Let everybody know. Grace Baptist Live webcast is starting right now. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. and friends, welcome to Grace Church Live. I'm one of your co-hosts, Vanessa Young. And I'm your other co-host, Carl Washington. And this month is our season of young adults, which we affectionately call the Yam Fam. And we have a lot of events in store for the month, which you'll hear about later. But for now, over to you, Pastor. I'm excited to welcome you to the live stream from Grace Baptist Church in Mount Vernon, New York. It is a joy to have you join from the various places around the globe. I'm thankful for those of you who are praying for this ministry, that God is going to expand it and push us to other places. I'm thankful for those that we hear from every week. And I'm thankful for those of you who are praying that God is going to set us up to be a greater witness for him. This week has been another week of challenge going through COVID, but we have been able to find stability in our reliance on God. I'm grateful for those are part of our team who keep this ministry going, as well as our food pantry ministry, our ministry to the sick and shut in, our ministry of prayer, and our ministry to the youth. We are grateful for all who help make Grace a vital and vibrant witness in our community. I pray that God will join you in the sanctuary space, spaces of your home or wherever you are gathered, that you may experience the power of God in this moment. And in this worship, you may find a closer knitting of your spirit to the spirit of God. Won't you join me as we begin this day in a word of prayer? Gracious and loving God, thou who art the source of our strength and the center of our joy, we thank you for this opportunity to worship with you this day. We pray, God, that you might touch those who are linked to us by the means of this virtual reality. We pray, God, that you might draw them close to us, that together we may feel even in the midst of the distance a closeness to you. We pray, God, that what we do here today will advance the cause of Jesus Christ, that it will bring somebody to the saving knowledge of Jesus, that somebody will let go and turn over their lives to God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this moment, fill us with your power divine. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's turn it back over to Carl and Vanessa. Thank you, Pastor. As we stated earlier, July is the season of young adults here at the Grace Baptist Church who are affectionately known as our Yam Fam. Yep, and now we'll hear from our president of the Yam Fam and the assistant minister for music, Mr. Antoine Dalbury, with the selection. And after that, we'll turn it back to you, Pastor. Hallelujah, all over the world, we come to give God praise. Somebody shout the name of Jesus in this place. Hey, we love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name, your Cannot explain, yeah, yeah. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Say your great name. Shout King Jesus. No other name. King Jesus. No one stronger. We can call you when we need you. Things will 
change. Hey, let's say that again. King Jesus, no other name. King Jesus, no one stronger. Yes, we can call on you when we call your name. Hey, I love this part. It says Hallelujah right here. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Anybody believe that today? There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power in your name. All over the world, say that with me. There's power. Hey. So much power. Healing power. Wonder working power. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is power. Hey, right here, say things change. Hey, when we call you, Jesus, so many things will start to change in your life. When you confess the name of Jesus, hey, say I'm free. your name God oh we magnify your name hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus no other name above your name oh we magnify your name hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Lord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you Antoine for your powerful witness the selection you have just rendered. I want to celebrate with you as president of our young adult ministry that this month is season of young adults. I'm excited about the powerful witness and expansion of our young adult ministry and for the, what is its meaning to our community, to our church, and to our families. We have some of the greatest young adults to be found in the world here at Grace. And I pray that this month will be a tribute to them, all of them, many of them in colleges returning home, many of them in new jobs and fresh careers, many of them starting new families. We are blessed by the rich legacy of young adults at Grace Church, and we are going to celebrate this month what they mean and how vital they are to the witness of Christ. 
Let me pause here to thank you for your support of this ministry. Your support has been such a blessing. Your prayers, your contributions, your speaking good of our witness, all the multiple ways in which we are being blessed. I'm thankful to our friends, people who are not even members of our ministry, who are making themselves available to help us do what God is calling us to do. May you find fulfillment in your partnership with us as we seek to be God's witness in the world. Thank you, and God bless you. Our platforms are available for your support. Let's turn it back over to Carl and Vanessa. We have an awful lot happening in our virtual church space right now. So although we're not able to meet in person, know that you, there's so many things you can do on Zoom, and Valerie's going to tell us how. Let's stay connected. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Antoine Dalbury, the president of the Yam Fam, and we are so excited to be entering the season of young adults. Our theme this year is We Got Next Now. We want you to join us at our mini events on Zoom. And if you want to reach us, please contact us at yamfamgbc at gmail.com. Hope to see you there. God bless. Hi, I'm Reverend William Mizell, and I want to personally invite you to join us for our church history lecture series. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m., we explore the rich legacy of Christian history together. Join us. You can find the Zoom link on our church's website, www.gracechurchtoday.org. Hope to see you this Tuesday at 7 p.m., and God bless you. Join Pastor Richardson this Wednesday at 7 p.m. as he begins the next Bible study series entitled, The Cost of Discipleship. During this series, you will explore the difference between the concepts of cheap grace versus costly grace. Get ready as you are compelled to face yourself and God in any situation. We will see you on Zoom this Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Zoom link can be found at www.gracechurchtoday.org. I know everyone has heard Pastor talk about the food pantry and what it's done for the community at large. Today, I am with the person that's responsible for this essential body of work, Reverend Sheila Simmons. Welcome. Thank you, Valerie, and thank you, Grace family. I'm so glad to be here. So how many families do we serve weekly? Approximately 500 families a week. But we realize that this work is so important because every week this line goes around the corner. We wrap the corner with people with shopping carts and bags that are needing food. I'm so grateful for Pastor and his vision for the food pantry because without this vision, our people would be lacking the essentials they need to feed their families. Thank you for being with us today. If you would like to support the food pantry, please take out your phone right now and send a donation using one of our platforms shown on the screen. Grace thanks you, but more importantly, the people thank you and appreciate your support. We thank God for the grace to pray and invite you to continue to connect with God in prayer as often as you can. You can join us for our daily morning prayer conference call at 7 a.m. or every Tuesday at noon or Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. We invite you to take advantage of all these opportunities to plug into the power of prayer by dialing 605-475-3220 and entering the access code 269901. We encourage you to share the power of prayer with a friend, family member, or neighbor. And remember, with God, we will get through this together. Let me extend a personal invitation to all of you young adults for Bible study this week. Here are some details. If you are 18 through 35, you can join Minister Carl Washington and the Yam Fam, the Young Adult Ministry of Grace, on Fridays at 7 p.m. Immerse yourself in scripture with like-minded young people as you study the word, connect with others, and share God's amazing grace. Again, join the Young Adult Bible Study on Fridays at 7 p.m. The Zoom link can be found at www.gracechurchtoday.org. We are continuing our children and youth worship services throughout the summer. Please register your children at info.gracemv at gmail.com. Children's Church begins at 10 a.m. on Zoom, and those are for ages 4 through 11. Youth Church begins at 12.30 on Zoom for ages 12 through 17. Go to our website, www.gracechurchtoday.org, for more information and to stay up to date on activities for children and youth. God bless you. Join us on Sunday mornings. There are multiple ways to connect, beginning with Pastor's Moment at 8 a.m., Sunday School at 9.30, 
Children's Church at 10 a.m., the live webcast of our Sunday worship service at 11 a.m., and Youth Church at 12.30 p.m. There is something for the entire family. The Zoom links and live stream connection can be found at our website at www.gracechurchtoday.org. We look forward to connecting with you. Good morning, Grace family and friends. I'm here to invite you to join us this summer for our virtual vacation Bible school, open to adults, young adults, and children ages four to 17 years old. Our theme, I've Got This with Jesus, promises to be an exciting experience while we learn, sing, do craft projects, and engage from our homes. Please join us Monday through Friday, July 20th to the 24th from 6 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. You can register at graceministry88 at gmail.com. After you register, you will receive the Zoom link. Looking forward to seeing you online through Zoom. As you all know, the U.S. Census is such an important topic right now. Let's learn how the community at large can get involved. Here with me is Reverend F. Romal Smalls. What's going on with the U.S. Census in the midst of all that is happening? That is an excellent question. The census is still going on despite all of the changes and the things that we've been going through. Everyone has a chance to participate and get involved with this U.S. Census. Why do some believe that the census is a social justice issue? The census is a social justice issue because it is how we get equity. Just like voting, this is how citizens participate and receiving the benefits and the resources that they need. And that is a key social justice issue. How can people complete the census? You can go to my2020census.gov and there you can fill it out online. You can get the information to fill it out by telephone and you still have a chance to mail it in. If you don't do all those things, you might get someone like me coming to your door asking you to fill out the census. But if you don't want anyone coming to your house, please fill out the census now and go to my2020census.gov. There you have it, and thank you very much. Told you there's a lot going on in the virtual church. Thank you, Valerie and Antoine, for filling us in. Yes, and all over this country during this season of change, young adults have been making a difference. They've been using their collective voices to stand up and fight for change. Yep, we're the ones on the street. We're Absolutely. the ones that are going to do it. Only our group can. Now we'll turn it back over to our pastor. This is a high moment in our worship experience when we have the opportunity to give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. I hope that you will take full advantage of the blessing that is waiting for you as you consider your gift to God. Please know that you can't beat God's giving. The more you give to him, the more God gives back to you. Generosity has a way of returning itself. I had a call this week from a man who said, Pastor, you always told me that if I'd give and be generous, it would come back to me. And he said, I just want you to know that my daughter got into the university and they just gave her a $33,000 scholarship. I tell you over and over again, I hear people share with me how God blesses their generosity. You cannot beat God giving no matter how you try. And your life will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. Your career will be blessed as you are generous to God, as you are faithful to God, as you say thank you to God. I hope in this moment you will receive the blessing that is waiting for you as you participate as a giving person. Bring your tithes and offerings at this time. We have a great tithing community. Tithing is God's way for us, the church, to be blessed and for we to be blessed as individuals. God bless you as the music plays, this is a moment of reflection and giving. Let us give. How many are out there blessed today? If you're blessed today, just clip the hands together and give God some praise. Every week you say, bless, bless.
thank you for every person who intentions to give this day. There may be some amongst us whose intention may not be realized because of their lack of resources. But God, we ask your blessings upon intention. We pray now, God, that you will bless the gifts that we have given, that they may find alignment with your purpose and bring glory to your name. We pray, God, that you will use our resources to make the world a better place, to save our children, to save our communities, to bless our elderly, to feed the hungry. God, we thank you this day for this opportunity. Bless now the giver and the gift. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We welcome into this moment our sermonic hymn, which will be rendered by our minister of music, Derek LaVon James, a blessing to the body of Christ. Let us hear as he shares this gift with us. Early in the 70s, Donnie Hathaway wrote this song, and he wrote it for his creator because he believed in God. And the name of the song is, We Need You Now, Lord. And I think it's very appropriate for the times that we're living in and these strange land experiences. We need you now. no one else I can turn to but you yeah you're the only answer to the situation that we got ourselves into Won't you please come down and give us a helping hand? Cause we need you, Lord, we need you right now. There's a lot of people going hungry Cause they can't get no food to eat Ooh, There's a lot of people coming homeless They don't have clothes or shoes to put on their feet. So master, won't you please come down and give us a helping hand because we need you. Yeah. We need you 
right now. James, we want to thank you for sharing that song with us. It speaks to the heart of where we are right now in the season of Yam Fam. Absolutely. And now we get to continue in our tradition by preparing for the sermon, by standing up wherever we are and singing Amazing Grace. I hope that you join us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Blind 
Thank God for his amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. We are grateful to come to this preaching moment as we invite God to speak to us. You know, we as Christians, we live off of the breath of God. And that breath is heard and felt in the preaching of the gospel. Let us pray as we begin this preaching moment. Eternal God, our mother and our father. We thank you for ordering our steps into this sacred space. And having come to this moment, we seek to hear your voice. Use this, your servant, as an instrument in your perfect hand, that the gospel of Jesus Christ may be preached in this moment. And if in our midst there is someone hungering for encouragement and nurture, may they find it in this preached word. If there's someone who sought, seeks salvation and a relationship with you, may they find it in this sacred word. If there's someone who just wants to affirm their connection with you, may they find it in this moment. Lord, speak to us. Our hearts are open and ready to hear your voice. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want you to consider with me this morning as the platform for this preaching moment, a passage that is recorded in the book of Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth through six verses. It is one of the great verses of the Old Testament, and many of us have found nurture as we have listened to it. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. I want to solicit your attention and consideration on this weekend of the 4th of July to this subject. When independence is dependence. When independence is dependence. It is clear to us that there is no dependence that frees us to be independent, like the independence that we have in God. This idea of independence, in many ways, it is really a fraudulent idea, because the truth is that we are never totally independent. We're always depending on something or somebody else. God, the creator, made us to be socially interactive and dependent on the other. None of us lives our lives unto ourselves. All of us have a need for the other. It is what faith calls the other, the divine other, the most dependable other, which is God. Each of us is dependent upon God. As a matter of fact, the scriptures affirm our dependency on God. It is clear in the document, uh, the sacred document of the United States, the founding document, that there is this theological statement Though I do not know it is intentionally 
made theologically, but it certainly has the implications, implications and the essence of what I'm trying to speak about this day. It, re it reads, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed by that creator with certain unalienable rights, among them being life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Even a nation is dependent upon the creator for its independence, as are the citizens of that nation dependent upon the creator, God, for their dependence, independence. So therefore, when we talk about independence, all independence, whether nation or people or relationships, all of them ultimately are un undergirded by the source of our creation, God. Independence, the result of dependence on God. This biblical text that I presented to you today is presented as an expression of that independence. The writer of Proverbs gives some powerful advice, and we may find in that advice at least three ways in which we may know what independence in God looks like. At least three ways that we may understand how we might discover our independence as we are dependent upon God. The first thing the text says is that we must trust in the Lord with all our heart. That means that we are totally surrendered to God, that our confidence is placed in God, that God, we turn our hearts, when we turn it all over to God, when we surrender to God, we become independent because we are dependent on him. When we trust him, we let go the reins. We take our hands off the steering wheel and leave it up to God. That's a freedom. That's a kind of, that's a kind of affirmation that we seek. It is to live our lives totally fearless because we have turned our lives over to God. Somebody here today who may not know the Lord, I want to encourage you to turn your, try him, turn your life over to him. You talk about being free. You talk about being free indeed. You talk about independence. Turn your life over to God. Give him your confidence and live in the glory of his independence. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Abandon it. Trust him with abandon. Surrender completely. Let go and let God. And you'll have the comfort and the freedom and the security of his independence. Secondly, the text says, lean not unto thy own understanding, which is to understand that human wisdom is always subservient to divine wisdom, that God's thoughts are above our thoughts, his ways are above our ways. And when we understand that God knows the way, when we understand that God has the path set for us, when we understand that his, he is far ahead of us in his thinking, we can trust him. and Therefore, we can have independence as we depend on on his wisdom. He, he knows the way. He, he understands. His, his thinking is ahead of our thinking. How many of us in times of great distress when we lose our loved ones or we have unfortunate circumstances in our lives, the only way that we can find a sense of stability is to trust in God's wisdom. And we say, the Lord knows what the Lord is doing. We trust God. And because we trust him and we know that God has insight and wisdom that surpasses our, he sees past our sight. Therefore, we put our complete confidence in him because his knowledge is deeper than our knowledge. He sees further than we can see. He knows what we do not know. Somebody here to, 
listening today, I want you to embrace that understanding. And when you embrace the understanding that God knows better than you know, there's a new sense of independence that will be infused into your heart and into your life. The final thing that this text offers that I want to submit to you today is that it says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. There are two things in this, this powerful line. First of all, that God is everywhere and in everything. That God is everywhere and in everything. And the second is that he knows the way, therefore in him we will never be lost. Now that's powerful. That, that's some joy in that. To know that God is everywhere and everything, that means that I am never outside of his reach. I am always in the reach of God. I can never fall so low or so deep that I cannot find my way to God. God, God is everywhere. I can't get beyond him. Is that not what the psalmist said in Psalm 139? Whether shall I flee from thy presence? Whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I should take the wings of the morning and fly to the utmost parts of the earth, even there will thou hand lead me, even there, and my soul shall be in thy right hand. Thou shall hold me in thy right hand. What a joy, joyful note that nothing, we can never get outside of the reach of God. No matter how dark, no matter how difficult, no matter how deep your trouble is, no matter how unmaneuverable you may see your circumstances, there is an independence that comes in knowing that I'm depending on a God who is always reachable. His line is never busy. He is never crowded out by the traffic of the internet. He is always accessible. And I can never fall out of his scope. That's great joy. But not only that, because he is everywhere and is always reachable to me, and because I acknowledge him in everything, he, I will never be lost because this all-knowing God is going to direct my path. What a joy that is. I'll never be outside of his reach, and I'll never be lost. Oh, glory. What, what great notions of, of excitement and enthusiasm. I am never outside of the reach of God, and I will never be lost. That's independence. Depending on that creates independence. I am independent because of my commitment, my trust in God because my understanding of how God understands, and because God is everywhere in everything, and I will never be lost. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I will never be lost. Somebody here today may be feeling like you're lost. May be feeling, feeling like life is closing in on you. May be feeling like a dark circumstance has come and crowded you out. May be crowded by sickness or financial trouble or the uncertainty, the depression of the times in which we are moving through this COVID and through the uncertainty of this nation. It may cause you great trauma, but I came by to tell you that you can be independent of what's going on in COVID, independent of what's happening in the protests and the racial pandemic independent of whatever's happening in your own individual life, when you understand and put your trust in him and understand that he knows what you're going through and he is always where you are. You're never outside of his reach. And he shall direct your path and you'll never be lost. You know, there's some joy. There's joy and security in knowing that my dependence gives me independence. It must have been, this notion of joy, must have been what Elijah Hoffman had in mind when he wrote that powerful hymn in the first part of the 19th century. He said, what a fellowship, what a joy 
divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, what blessedness, peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting life. Leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms, always secure, secure, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have peace complete with my Lord so dear, leaning on the everlasting arms. My independence is because I am dependent on God. I'm dependent on him, therefore I am always independent of anything or anybody else. Milton Brunson contemporarily said in 2012, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. On July 4th, 1776, the United States of America, after a hard fought battle and the shedding of blood, declared victory and made the Declaration of Independence that all men were created equal. On April the 1st, 1956, after much bloodshed and a hard-fought battle on my behalf, I had the declaration of my independence from evil and Satan. And today, I declare that every one of us who are Christians ought to have a day of independence, a day when we were set free from evil, set free from the devil, set free from negative forces, set free. Praise God, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. I'm just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have my independence. My independence is not in my material possessions. It's not in my educational accomplishments. It's not in the friends or contacts I may have. It is not in the government in which I live. It is not in my family. My independence is in my dependence on God who will come through, who will bring me out, who will stand me up when the world would sit me down. My independence is in my dependence on God. I invite you, whoever you are, listening today, to come to know the independence that comes from being dependent on God, leaning on Him, putting your trust in Him. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. You'll never, you'll never be lost. You'll never be abandoned. You'll never be out of reach his amazing grace and powerful witness. I want to invite you to, to a moment of decision. I want to invite you to come to know the Lord today. I want to invite you to give yourself to him. Wherever you are, whatever your situation, wherever you're gathered in the sacred sanctu sanctu sanctuaries of our homes, to uh, give God a chance. He wants, he wants to bless you. And I want to extend to you an invitation to accept him as Lord in your life. I want to extend you an opportunity to let your life rest on a dependency in God and be totally liberated from anything else or anybody else. To understand that my independence is based on my dependence. On God. Would you be blessed? Would you be blessed today to accept Him as a source of the battle won, the bloodshed, and the victory 
that belongs to you. In Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for our sisters and brothers who are sharing with us in this hour. We pray, God, that this opportunity of underscoring our dependence upon you, that we may know true independence, will seal us in our faith and bring us to a place of greater trust on you. Bless us, God, right now as we seek to be your disciples. And if in our midst this day there is someone who would make a decision, free them now. Take away their dependencies on anything else. Help them to open their eyes to a dependency on you that will lead to authentic independence. In the name of a living God, who is Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for that inspirational word to carry us through another week. As we prepare our hearts and minds to take the Lord's Supper, we're going to ask that you welcome Mr. Marvin Lowe as he shares with us a rendition of Beams of Heaven to take us to the throne as we prepare for Holy Communion. As I go through this wilderness below, guide my feet in peaceful ways. Ten Night in today, I do not know how long it will be, nor what the future. Beams of heaven as I go through this wilderness below. Guide, Lord, guide my feet. Always tell my midnight in today. I do not know how long it will be, no what the future. But this I know, if my Jesus, he leads me, I shall get home, I shall get home, I shall get home.
Well, we thank Marvin Lowe for that wonderful selection of Beams of Heaven. It was a blessing. And now we gather for the Lord's Supper. This is an important moment in the life of our church. It is one of the ways we've stayed connected through this COVID season. I'm thankful to many members who came on the parking lot yesterday and received their elements for the Lord's Supper. This is a sacred moment in the life of the church. I want to read the scripture this morning that sets the stage for our receiving the elements. It's from the Gospel of Luke in the 22nd chapter and beginning at verse 15. And he said unto them, with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together as family, as your disciples, as the church, in witness to your unconditional love demonstrated in your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for grace that gives us passport to this table, not our deeds, not our works, but your grace. We pray now, God, that you might search our hearts, that whatever's in us that is not like you, whatever in us that is contrary of your vision for your creation, that you might correct. We pray, God, in this moment, you might increase our faith and our focus on what is you. We pray, God, that you might bless every person under the sound of my voice, that the anointing shall be upon their homes and their families. Bless now these elements, this bread and this cup, that they may be worthy symbols of your broken body that is shed and blood shed for me. Bless us now, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And he took the bread and he break it and he gave it to them. Let us Wherever you are, let us eat together. And likewise, he took the cup and said, this shall be for you the blood of the New Testament. Let us commune together. Amen. And they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. May women and men know that we are Christians by our love. And may we come to know that it is in our dependence upon God that we experience true independence. God bless you. Go in peace. Thank you for joining us this Sunday. I hope that you were inspired by the word and the music and communion. Yes, and please remember to stay connected with us via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram all week long. And you can find out all the Zoom links on our website, gracechurchtoday.org. Hope to see you again next week.